lecture and support begins in three, two, one. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Nurture and Support. I am Mel at Karmic9 on Twitter. Hi everybody, this is Kelly at K-E-L-L-Y-T-H-U-L on Twitter and Instagram. And yay, another episode of Nurture and Support, the greatest recommendation podcast ever. Probably the longest. I think we got some, I mean, since 2013, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. We've been doing this a long, long time. But fortunately for everyone, I have a really short recommendation for you this week, so you don't have to take a lot of time to find out what Melissa's bought on Amazon (laughs) that I need to tell everybody about. So my recommendation this week is unfortunately everyone unavailable at this time. I probably bought one of the very one of the very last ones they had available, but I think they'll be back once um, supply kind of gets back going. So we all know I like Star Wars. We're big fans of Star Wars on this show. So I sent Kelly a link of this so i brought them here so i could hold them up but the probably the picture is better these are some leia and han bookends because what else do i like besides star wars but books and i actually have quite a few star wars books and so i have a whole display shelf of all of my books and a bunch of my Star Wars memorabilia, and I thought these bookends would be perfect to go up there at each end. So they're really pretty cool. I'll hold one up to the camera for Kelly so he can see kind of the size of them. They are kind of your standard black cast iron L-shaped bookends with a silhouette, the classic silhouette of Leia from Empire in her flowy white gown holding up the, uh, I don't know, Is it a pulse rifle? That's what I want to call it. I'll go with that. I think that seems pretty reasonable. Yeah. So it's that classic silhouette of her. And then Han is his classic stance where he's shooting a blaster. So they're pretty, the iconic images of Han and Leia from Empire. It's just makes me happy. So these were not cheap, I have to say. I want to say, I think they ran about $49. I waited for someone to buy them for me as a gift, and they didn't. So I had to buy them myself. But they make me happy. What were the kind of subtle hints you dropped to say this might be a good gift for me? I I kind of printed it out and left it around. (laughs) Circled it, put some hearts by it. Put it up on the refrigerator. You know, Christmas, birthday, nobody ever got it. So anyway, they're really one of the what I really like about them other than the theme is their heavy bookends. So if anybody actually still had encyclopedias around, these bookends wouldn't have any trouble holding up a heavy encyclopedia style book. So if you have some of the large art books from Star Wars, these would do really good at holding them up um, because they're heavy. They're not just your thin, those thin metal ones that will tip over very easily. These are like cast iron. They're enameled, so they have a texture on them. They're not quite a smooth metal, but there's no sharp edges on them. They're not going to scratch up your tables or your nice bookcases or anything like that. So I think they're pretty good quality. I think they're really good quality, actually. And I love the theme. So they're made by a company called Heavenly Craft with a K that, at least on Amazon, I really haven't looked to see if they show up anywhere else. I kind of think this company really only sells these kind of things on Amazon. So unfortunately, they're unavailable right now, but I hope that they'll be back soon. And y'all can get some too, because they're really fun and they're cool. It's awesome. And that would be, since I have Mel's past book recommendations and others, and I have a lot of Star Wars art and tons of Game of Thrones stuff uh, as well. These could be put to very good use once they're yeah. back available, since Mel yeah. snuck in there on us and got, got one of the last copies. Yeah. Yes, and if they never come back, mine are worth a lot more. There you go. (laughs) (laughs) But just like my books, they'll never leave me. They'll stay with me forever. So, But they're really cool. I like them. So I sent Kelly a link. He will, I'm sure, show y'all a pretty picture on the blog post. Indeed, I will. And I think, Mm -hmm. since we have been going since 2013, we may want to 
consider a show reformatting and, and we'll just call it what did mel and kelly buy from amazon this week <laughs> because my recommendation is going to be for an amazon purchase and during lockdown the, I, some of the amazon purchases go up i have a couple things i've been kind of knocking off here and there and we could just throw our orders up read our order <laughs> and yeah. there'd, be, there'd be the show oh maybe we'll do something like that we'll see but mine is also an amazon order way way back I made a recommendation on something that's also no longer available, which was a $99 LED projector. And Mm -hmm. uh, it's done a a great job for me. I don't think, I don't know if the company's no longer going concern or whatever, but you can't find it. But you can find still lower priced, lower end LEDs around that price range. And of course you can start to dial up depending on how much quality you want to get. But it's been a trooper. It's done a great job for me. And for the most part, I've just had the Roiku. Uh, attached to it so I could watch Game of Thrones, so I could watch Better Call Saul, do all those fun things uh, on a nice big screen. But I also have this growing collection of old game systems <laughs> that I also kind of wanted to play, and they're really kind of fun to play on the big screen. And so I have a Nintendo 64, a PlayStation 2, a PlayStation 3, which also gives me a Blu-ray and a DVD player. And I had jury-rigged something up, basically, that there were cables kind of flowing all over the place dangling from the ceiling at one part to get everything through there so i could kind of plug and unplug and do different things but uh it was kind of a hassle so i needed to i received some direction that i needed to tidy that up (laughs) and so i began some work to clean that up i'm gonna stop for a second oh you're not fruit i thought you were froze mel (laughs) you weren't i'm just i'm just you know wrapped wrapped it's fascinating yeah it's great yeah it was it was good Um, i'm I'm actually i'm really i'm really wondering where this is going because are we talking about another projector because i'm sort of in the market yeah yeah, you're gonna you're gonna be disappointed (laughs) oh darn (laughs) i received direction to clean that up a little bit uh, and so i did uh and maybe a future recommendation will be some of the things I did to accomplish that. But at the end of the day, my projector has one HDMI input, one uh, composite input, and a USB input. And so the great, got the composite from the Nintendo 64 to go up, and that's in. Uh, had the HDMI for the Roiku going in, and then the PlayStation 3 well, excuse me, the PlayStation 2 also composite, so I had a little switcher box for the, the different composites, so I've got those all connected. But PlayStation 3 is HDMI, and the Roiku was that, and I was kind of kind of hosed. So I did some fine searching uh, on Amazon and found a really nice, possibly one of the least expensive recommendations ever on nurture and support. For around $8, uh, I got a really nice HDMI switcher. And it was kind of interesting it, uh, as I started to look through there to figure out what I wanted to get. Some of those required power. And given the number of things I already had plugged in and things running through there, I was really not wanting to have some things. But much like maybe, maybe some of your experiences have been with USB splitters, if you get a USB splitter and it doesn't have power, you run into some issues. But I did actually find, and I'm going to ask Mel to pronounce this company's name. <laughs> uh-uh. Because, well, let's see. So I will spell it, and then because you won't see this, but I will show it on my camera for her as well. The spelling is T-E-C-H-O-L-E. And I'll just, because... <laughs> okay. So, so it's that... How would you say that? <laughs> I'm guessing I, I I I would say like any good American tech hole. Tech hole. <laughs> Which in and of itself, everyone it's needs cool. to own a tech hole product. We do. Yeah. I don't. I to to it could be Tichole, I suppose. <laughs> Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's out of it's out of the UK, which is close to Spain, so maybe it's Tecole. <laughs> you know, so it could you, be. So, it could so be. We go there. But this is. Uh, I like Tecole. T- t- we'll go, we'll go with Tecole. <laughs> it's from America. <laughs> and so, super. I mean, it's, it is what you'd expect. It's an HDMI splitter, two, one to two. So I'm all juiced up and ready to go and test it out. And it's great because I can kind of whip between all the different systems very easily and play some Mario Kart, jump over, do some Donkey Kong stuff, then go into the PlayStation 2, Battlefront, Star Wars Battlefront on the PlayStation 2, still the best version of Battlefront ever for my money, and then the PlayStation 3 Duke Nukem thing. And so all kinds of fun stuff. So I've been doing that, but it's from from, uh, Tecole or (laughs) Tecole, and it's a USB splitter. (laughs) 
Doesn't require any power. You plug it in. Signal's great. Good definition. It'll handle up to 4K. And there is, on Amazon, these are in stock, but there's the 799 version. And there's also a 1099 version, which basically, from what I can tell, is just a newer model. It's all the same thing. The indicator, instead of just being an LED light, jumps to the number one and number two. That, so, But it's not really significantly better. So I, I looked at both and said, ah, I'll go with the cheaper one. Been super happy with it. And so if you do run into that situation where you're trying to get to, uh, whether it's a monitor or a projector or whatever, but multiple inputs. This was cheap, easy, came quick, and is, is doing the job. Techhole HDMI splitter is my recommendation and my Amazon order for this week. <laughs> I'm going to have to look at that. I might need one. We've got, we have an older TV that only had, you know, when they first started putting those out, they only had at most eight, two HDMI ports. I always have to unplug something to plug in the DVD player or the Blu-ray player for my mom. It'd be nice if they could all be plugged in all the time. This this might do it for you. And you might go to your version, the $10 version. Let me know how that works. But I can't complain. Yeah. Yeah. It's always something that's useful to have around. You always want one. You never can find one when you need it. So. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look at that. I probably, I probably really should get one of those. So, but speaking of consoles, I have an Xbox 360 Star Wars version. <laughs> yes, I knew that. <laughs> that I still, that I still keep, just because it makes the little R2D2 noise when you turn it off. <laughs> I need to get the new Xbox, but. I just can't. I just can't let go of my little R two D two three sixty, and I don't even play console games, y'all. That's the saddest part. I'm a PC gamer. We know that. Yep. So. Yeah, I'll do. It's been a little while, but now that I got everything hooked up, <laughs> you know, because it was always before to some of a somewhat of a hassle, but now I'm good, and uh, and it's it is kind of fun to play some of these games like uh, Battlefront when it's you know this big eight foot by yeah. eight foot kind of deal uh so it's pretty cool it's fun yeah the the only console games i really miss honestly were on the wii because <laughs> you can't get the same experience with um having the the controller from the wii on a on a pc i can't remember the name of the game it was a it was a western samurai game and you chopped people up with your sword and stuff with the wii controller huh. i'll have to look it up it's a great game. I loved it. <laughs> yeah. I have it somewhere. Yeah, that uh, that was the the Wii. It ended up migrating to a different uh, display area because just the logistics of placing the sensor bar, having the Wii be able to get yeah. to the projector, just wasn't going to work out super well. So uh, that's the one system that I did yeah. not connect up. But yeah, and our good friend Mike. Uh, has been chatting about the idea of at some point us starting to do a series uh, where we're talking more about video games. So uh, expect some invites. <laughs> I think we'll be bringing you in on some. I'm going to guess the answer is no to this, but are you a big Mortal Kombat player? <laughs> I haven't actually played in a long, long time. There was a time when I was, when, when I was younger and I had um, siblings to beat up on. In Mortal Kombat, and we played Mortal Kombat, but there are also a couple of other ones. There was Tekken, yeah, um, and, and and other ones like that. So we did a lot when I was younger. I haven't had as many people to beat up on as I've gotten older and alone. So, and given my internet situation, the playing online has <laughs> been a, a huge sketchy. thing. Yeah. yeah. So, but yes, I used to be pretty good at it completely by accident because I'm a button masher. You accidentally get some combos going. And then it's like, I don't even know how I did that. that it's uh, fun. Seems to be the, the best strategy sometimes. Mm -hmm. All right. It's well, fun. Amazon, I hope you're listening and understanding all the business Mel and I are pushing your way. <laughs> so when you see your Star Wars bookends and your tech hole stock, <laughs> continue to deplete. <laughs> uh, Sorry, you know, tech hole people. <laughs> tech hole. Tech hole. Ecole. We don't know. We don't know. But uh, we're, we're just here. Americans in quarantine. What do yeah. we know? That's right. We just buy stuff. <laughs> That's right. And we'll wrap it up. We'll yeah. get off. We'll go buy some more stuff. Probably the next time we get back together, we'll 
give you some updates on the next the latest things we've purchased. So with that, I'm going to say yep. thanks for listening, everybody. Bye. You can contact us on our website, nurtureandsupport.net, or email us at nurtandsup at gmail.com. That's N-U-R-T-A-N-D-S-U-P-P at gmail.com. Or tweet us at Nurt and Sup on Twitter. You can also catch Nurture and Support on YouTube. Nurturing and supporting. Turn it.